All right, guys, welcome back. Um, we're going to be running a short series on trout. Now, there's a lot of interest in South Africa at the moment with rainbow trout, with brown trout, and particularly with aquaponics. But trout starts right at the beginning. So what I want to do is take you through how we hatch out our trout um, and the processes that we follow. So what we've got over here is my hatching troughs. Um, this is where we're going to put the eggs that have just arrived. Now, with this hatching trough, when I put the eggs in, I'll explain a lot more details. But the first thing I have to do is get my temperatures down to about 4 degrees. So, what I'm doing at the moment is literally adding bags of ice into the system to get that temperature down. And the key with the, the, the trout is that you only want the temperature to rise by maximum one degree an hour. Um, and so we've actually got about six bags of ice here. Um, and what we're gonna do is let this ice for the next half hour cool my water down till I hit four degrees. And then we're gonna show you the eggs. Okay, so it's been about 45 minutes. We've uh, added the ice, the temperatures have dropped down to five degrees. Now, the important thing to note that these eggs here are being kept at just above freezing. When I open it, you're gonna see how they're being transported. So you cannot put these eggs into anything that is higher than five degrees Celsius. Between four and five degrees is perfect. Uh, and as I mentioned, you want that temperature to increase by no more than a degree every hour until I get to my 10 degrees. That's the temperature I want them to hatch out at. But uh, this delivery came in this morning um, from a, a local seed, uh, <laughs> seed supplier, egg supplier. Um, and what we've got here is actually mixed sex brown trout. Um, so we do hatch both brown trout and rainbow trout. Um, and as a general rule, most of the uh, brown trout come as mixed sex, so um, as opposed to female. So what I'm going to show you is the box that they come in. All right. So there's my cold box. Now, obviously, you got to make sure that that box is sealed, so it hasn't been tampered with. Um, so it is sealed and that seal's not broken. So I'm hoping that inside is exactly what I'm looking for. So what we're going to do is break the second seal. And it is so important that the eggs are transported in a brand new sterilized clean container. Because you do not want those eggs in any way to have got infected um, due to any sort of bacteria. There we go. So what you'll see here, on top, this ice pack here is dripping cold water or ice water onto my eggs the whole time. And so when I break this off and this off, and I'm gonna take out this inside tray, And just out of curiosity or interest, these trays and these eggs are designed to be transported for about 24 hours. So when they arrive, you don't have to feel like you have to get them into the system within, you know, five, 10 minutes. Um, but as long as this ice here on top is still frozen, it's gonna continue dripping, keeping those eggs alive. Um, and those eggs do have a lot of oxygen. And you're gonna see that now as I open it. Okay, there we go. In here, if you have a look, these are, this is uh, 10,000 eggs, brown trout. Now you'll see they've all eyed. Those are all the little babies, so these are already fertilized. Um, so let's go get these guys in to the hatching trough. All right, now one of the great things here is my hatching troughs are, are quite big. So what I'm able to do is actually just put these eggs and spread them out over the trough. You don't want these eggs to be too clumped up. 
Um, so what I am going to do is get a trusty feather and we're going to spread them all out. But the idea is that what's happening here is my water is flowing underneath up through my mat or my tray and out here. So my eggs are always getting fresh oxygenated water. Now if you have a look you will see that there's already some dud eggs. So the dud eggs are the, the white ones, those have died. Those need to be removed as soon as possible to avoid them infecting. But also looking at the color, they're very light pink. That tells me that I'm only about three or four days away from these hatching. So let's get the second trough in. And I'm going to do exactly the same. And just the other thing that I didn't mention uh, in terms of water quality, I mentioned five degrees Celsius as temperature. But the other very important factor is my pH. My pH here has to be at 6.5. That is the pH of the fish inside the egg. They cannot hatch out at a higher or lower pH than that. You're going to put your fish at risk. Again, if we have a look at these eggs, there are a few dead ones that are a bit moldy. And what you'll see here, those two eggs over here, that they stick together. And if that moldy egg uh, is in contact with a healthy egg, it's highly likely that the, the bacteria is going to spread. So we're going to go show you how to remove those dud eggs right now. All right. Now, the tools we need in a hatchery and over the last few years i've tried a lot of different things and, and what i've actually settled on is a feather and chopsticks are your essential tools now the chopsticks are by far for me maybe it's having lived in asia the easiest way to remove those dead eggs you might need to practice how to use chopsticks but once you do they're very efficient the feather if you have a look is just a really nice gentle way for me to spread my eggs out and move them around so that they're not clumped on top of each other. And it's always good if they do start to clump to spread them out. Now if you're wondering, the process is the same for salmon. I did mention rainbow trout and brown trout are the ones we do at this farm. But the process is exactly the same for the Atlantic salmon. Uh, if that's what you are wanting to hatch. Right, so let's get those dead ones out as soon as possible. Bit of practice here on my chopstick skills. That dead egg covered in mold. That one too. And as I mentioned, you'll see how that healthy egg has stuck to the bad egg. Now that's why a bad egg is so dangerous. So I'm going to make sure we get them out as soon as possible. Now over the next week, I'm going to be spending a lot of time in here. Because you cannot afford to miss a single egg if it goes bad. Here's another good example of a bad egg that's already infecting two good eggs. I'm just going to remove those uh, eggs. They're not going to make it. Uh, they've already been exposed to too much. All right. Magic. So. Um, the one important thing is the eggs don't like to be exposed to too much light. So I am going to cover these up just now um, with ISO board. It's also good insulation just to keep it nice and dark. So I'm going to show you when I do that. Um, uh, but before I do that, I'll quickly explain how my system's working. This is a, a fiberglass trough um, and it's uh, 2.4 by 1.2 meters wide. My water inlet is at the far end 
and my water outlet is on this end which I can control the height of. As I mentioned, each of these troughs is blocked at the front so that my water is coming underneath the eggs and out, um, which is a very, very, very crucial process for those eggs to continuously have lots and lots of clean oxygen and water. So underneath, you'll see a number of key elements here. This is my biological and mechanical filter. Inside here, I've got metallic sheets, providing me that filtration. I've got a UV light and my sump. And what's happening is my water, as it drains out of my trough, is coming through my filter, through the UV light, into my sump, and then being pumped back. You'll also see I've got a small air pump aerating my sump to increase the oxygen levels in the water. So pretty simple setup. This we, we all manufactured ourselves, constructed everything here. Um, not overly complicated, but it is really important to have a nice water flow, the UV light, um, and very, very good filtration. So before I pack up for the day, as I mentioned, what I'm going to do is cover up my troughs like that. And that just helps keep it nice and dark inside so the eggs don't get too stressed. Um, and as I mentioned, every time I come in, I'm going to take those off, check my eggs. Okay, so that's it for today. Uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, over the next few episodes, we're going to take you through all of the processes we do on a daily basis to hatch those eggs and what do we do after that. So tune into the next episode, make sure to subscribe, and it's good to be back. I'm Justin. Have a good day.